legislation of the Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies is hereby called to order. Uh, at this point, let me acknowledge the presence of the following committee members, Minority Floor Leader Senator Coco Pimentel, Senator Bongo, with uh, two senators present, I declare the presence of a quorum. And may I ask the committee secretary to acknowledge our guests and resource persons attending today. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning to our guests. For today's hearing, we have we are graced with the presence of the following re representatives from different government agencies and organizations. First, from the BSP, we have Deputy Governor Mamerto I. Tangonan, Attorney Elmore O. Capule, Ms. Illuminada T. Sikat, Attorney Mary Ann Pilim, Attorney Charina B. De Vera Yap, Mr. Dennis D. Lapid, Attorney Joanna e Eileen Capones, Elisha G. Lirios, Michelle Evaresta Remo, Rick Wesley Carillo, Mauro E. Hasmin Jr., Eugenio Alfredo Gloria, Attorney Rowena Figuero Figueroa. From the DOF, they sent uh, they have a representative, Ms. Isabella Hoxon. From the Philippine Fiber Industry F Development Authority or PILFIDA, they uh, they have their representative, Mr. Robert G. Atienza, Ms. Amor Criencia. From the Federation of Free Farmers, we have Mr. Leonor Q. Montemayor. From Pulp Specialties Philippines, we have Mr. Victor Anthony Villarreal, together with Maria Isabel Ongpin and Aurora Peralta, as well as Anne Marie de Chavez. Aurora, Ms. Aurora Peralta also represents the Association of Abaca Pulp Manufacturers in AAPMI. That's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, <clears throat> Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Welcome. Uh, for today's hearing, the committee will conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the following. Uh, Resolution number three, resolution calling for an investigation in aid of legislation on the frequent changes in the Philippine banknotes and coins initiated by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas by Senator Coco Pimentel. The privileged speech of, Sen privileged speech of Senator Coco Pimentel in plenary on September 28, 22. PS resolution number three talks about the frequency of changes in the design of our banknotes while the privileged speech of Senator Coco Pimentel delivered in plenary on September 28, 2022, talks about the change in the materials used in our banknotes from the old paper banknotes that use our very own abaca mixed with cotton to polymer, which is essentially plastic. Changes in our banknotes are necessary in terms of, uh, in terms of practicality and for its historical value. Our banknotes have reflected the history of the period in which they are made, and flashed on our screen are some of the pictures of our old banknotes kept by the BSP. It is necessary for practical purposes to change the design of our currency as there is a constant threat that improvements in counterfeiting technologies will defeat the integrity of our banknotes. Thus, they need to continuously change the design and security features of our Philippine peso to prevent the circulation of forged money, which is detrimental to our economy. BSP in this regard is duty bound to be on top of this matter and be always ahead of counterfeiters. Usually, countries change their notes, bank notes every 10 years and to ward off counterfeiters. Just recently, on March 27, 2018, BSP introduced the new generation series, which looks like this. Flash, we will flash it on the screen. Yet, less, in less, less than a few sh years short of 10 years, uh, in 2022, BSP is introducing another banknote using a new material, polymer, which may affect our abaca industry and poses important questions on sustainability and plastics disposal. This raises the question, uh, is this change necessary at this point? How many incidents of counterfeiting on our new generation series have occurred in the past four years? Are the security features in the new polymer series better than the new generation series? Does the BSP intend to replace all our property, all our paper banknotes with polymer banknotes? 
how will the change of paper notes to polymer notes affect the local abaca industry, of which we are the top producer in the whole world? Are we not wasting money and causing unnecessary convenience to the public for changing our banknotes? Is the from the short span of 2018 to 2022, have the counterfeiters quickly trans tampered the security features in our 2018 generation series? Is the change to a new design simply intended to pave the way for the use of polymer notes in our country? So, according to our research, there is a uh, advantages and disadvantages to polymer banknotes. For the advantages, it is waterproof. Polymer is resistant to water. The banknotes will therefore suffer little from high humidity or rain. It's dirt proof. As mentioned, the surface of polymer banknotes is very smooth. The banknotes are thus less susceptible to dirt. Moreover, if the banknotes do, do get dirty, it is relatively easy to clean them. Long lifetime. Uh, besides being water and dirt resistant, polymer banknotes can also withstand extreme temperatures. They suffer relatively little from local circumstances. They're hard to counterfeit. Partly by the three-dimensional structure of the polymer, polymer banknotes can be provided with high-tech security features. It requires a specific and expensive yet effective technology that has proven to reduce the number of counterfeiting remarkably. Poly five, recyclable. Polymer banknotes are recyclable. All that is needed is to palletize the shredded polymer notes at high temperature. The recycled polymer pallets can then be turned into new plastic items like compost bins, flower pots, and power sockets. For the disadvantages, they are hard to fold. Uh, polymer banknotes are relatively hard to fold. There will be a crease along the fold line when force folded. They are slippery. The surface of polymer banknotes is very smooth. Being smooth has advantages, but it can also be a disadvantage. It makes the banknote relatively slippery and so less comfortable to hold, count, and transfer. They're sticky when wet. Polymer banknotes get sticky, can get sticky when wet. That is also why banknotes are relatively less comfortable to hold, count, and transfer. Furthermore, the latter two points can be a problem for sorting machines at central banks. Risk of fading. There is a risk that colors of polymer notes fade. It happened in Nigeria and is possibly a climate-related disadvantage. In this hearing, we will carefully weigh the pros and the cons of the recent initiatives of the BSP on the subject matter with the aim of providing a recommendation or legislation on what is most beneficial for all Filipinos. Marami salamat po, and at this point, we will proceed with our hearing. Uh, please allow me to make specific rules uh, to ensure the orderly and effect efficient conduct of the hearing. Can the committee secretary inform today's attendees of our house rules, please? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ka, for our house rules, kindly mute your microphone if you are not re recognized or do not wish to be recognized. Since the visuals of the online meeting are limited, please inform the chairperson of your inquiry by specifying your name before stating your concern, concern, comment, or position. All data that the resource persons wish to present relative to the subject today may be submitted to the committee secretariat for the consideration of this body. Only one representative per office or organization will be allowed to speak for their respective organizations. That's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, at this juncture, please uh, accept my heartfelt gratitude to all of you. Thank you for understanding. Uh, thank you for attending this committee hearing and assisting us in deeply understanding the topics to be discussed this morning. Before we proceed with the hearing proper, may I ask the other senators present at this hearing if they have any opening statements prior to our discussion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, yes uh, Senator uh, Pimentel, you're recognized. So, magandang umaga po sa lahat and... Uh... Una sa lahat, uh, I would like to thank the chairman for calling for this uh, hearing uh, on the topics which I raised in a resolution as well as in a privileged speech. Uh, yung summary po ni chairman sa mga tanong, nandun na po lahat yun, uh, natanong ko po yun sa ating resolution and privileged speech. So salamat chairman for studying <laughs> those, uh, those uh, documents. <laughs> Uh, at saka, but the, let us not forget the in aid of legislation uh, portion also of our hearing because we have to make more transparent, uh, Mr. Chairman, the system of how our banknotes are designed, how they are ordered, how they are delivered, distributed, and how the study or uh, pilot testing is to be conducted 
who makes all of these decisions? How many people are involved? Uh, is there a review uh, process? Is there a feedback mechanism process? Kasi po, ang nangyari po kasi dito, we are, as stated by the chairman, we are, we are, we are uh, uh, changing the design of the 1,000 peso banknote and we are changing the material. As far as the material is concerned, Yun, we are, uh, we are going, uh, we are, parang, parang we are deciding against a Philippine-specific uh, industry, the abaca industry, kasi meron pong abaca content yung uh, so-called paper bank notes. So that's why they are here, the industry uh, organization is here to give us their uh, position. As far as the design is concerned, sa material yung abaka, pagdating naman sa design, ah, hindi pa, isa pa lang issue sa material, Mr. Chairman, kung kung, if we go to polymer, uh, we have facilities at the BSP, which may not, which which most likely, can no longer be able to print the polymer bank notes na uh, at this time, kaya natin gawin with the paper bank notes. Okay, pagdating naman po sa design, this is a rel the, the new generation series is, relatively speaking, still a new design uh, described by the BSP in their own uh, literature or reading materials to be the most difficult uh, design to counterfeit. Uh, and then, yet we are going to change it uh, in relatively in less than ten years. Tapos we are abandoning the, the what they call the hero series, uh, changing the design of our banknotes in pa and found. So, so ayon na doon na who makes all of these decisions? Because uh, mahirap din po yung sa pabago-bago po ng uh, design ng pera, nakakalito din po sa mga users of the of the notes and the coins ng ating bansa. And then just to give everybody a uh, uh, an early feedback, ang feedback po sa mga nakausap ko regarding the polymer 1,000 pesos, eh, hindi po... Hindi po sila satisfied sa polymer 1000 peso banknotes compared to the paper banknotes mas actually to summarize the the feeling parang parang mas fake mas fake pa si 1000 peso polymer banknote yun ang feeling nila na parang fake po ito and then siguro on the technical side uh, let BSP's uh, technical people correct me if i am wrong pagdating daw po sa paper we can incorporate security features into the paper while the paper is being manufactured before this is turned into a banknote. Pagdating po sa polymer, we can only print, printed lang po ang security features. So maybe that's, that's one uh, technical matter that we can also uh, talk about. And then uh, one final thing, Mr. Chairman, Para alam na rin po ng BSP ito, the committee in charge of this uh, pilot uh, testing, ang initial sentiment po ng Senado ha, during the, the night that I delivered the privilege speech is to express the sentiment of the Senate to stop to stop this, uh, uh, <clears throat> this shift to polymer notes. Kaya siguro, in the meantime, uh, para alam na ng BSP to in the meantime, if there are plans in the pipeline to conduct pilot testing at the other denominations like 500, 100, or whatever na gawing, pol na gawing polymer, isuspend na po natin muna ito. Let us, let us not have simultaneous pilot testing or simultaneous experiments. Uh, na, na launch na natin ito sa 1,000 pesos. Let's stick to this pilot testing in the meantime. Kasi yun nga po, yung initial sentiment is not so encouraging. But then since I know that this is a pilot test or an experiment, 
then you need time to uh, to collate, to gather feedback or the data that you, that you need to, for you to come up with your proper conclusions. So let this hearing be uh, one avenue, Mr. Chairman, for the BSP to also uh, collect the information that they need pursuant to this experiment or pilot run, pilot testing that they're conducting with our 1,000 peso banknote. So, so with that said, Mr. Chairman, salamat po ulit for calling uh, this hearing. And thank you for, to everyone who is uh, taking their, uh, spending their time uh, with us this morning. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Senator Pimentel. Uh, I'd like to ask at this point if uh, either uh, Senator Bongo or Senator Robin Padilla, Robin Hood Padilla, would like to make an opening statement. So at this point, I'd like to ask the BSP to give their uh, position on the subject matter and to make your presentation. So uh, please proceed. Good morning, honorable senators. Thank you for inviting the BSP to shed light about the country's first polymer piso. On behalf of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, I am Deputy Governor Mamerto Tangonan of the BSP's Payments and Currency Management Sector. Much as the governor would be glad to personally attend today's session, he is currently in Washington, D.C., representing the BSP in the IMF World Bank Annual Meeting. I am joined by my BSP colleagues, Senior Assistant Governor and General Counsel Attorney Elmer Capule on my left, Senior Assistant Governor Illuminada Sikat of the Monetary and Economic Sector on Attorney Capule's left, Managing Director Tony Lambino of the Strategic Communication Subsector on my right, and further right is the De Director El El Eloisa Glindro and farthest left is Deputy Director Sarah Curtis, both from the Payments and Currency Management Sector. I am pleased to share our initiatives and analysis on the issuance of the new 1,000 piece of polymer banknotes. This presentation is structured as follows. First, we will recall the legal basis of the BSP polymer project. Second, we will discuss the BSP polymer project underscoring the rationale of it. Third, we will present the results of our research based on international publications, reports from other central banks, as well as from consultations with them. Fourth, we will present the estimated impact on the abaca industry, starting from its value chain and its link to Philippine banknote production. And last would be the recap. The 1987 Philippine Constitution provides that Congress shall establish an independent central monetary authority to provide policy direction in the areas of money, banking, and credit. Consistent with our constitutional mandate, the new Central Bank Act of 1993, as amended, vests upon the BSP the exclusive power and authority to issue currency it likewise states that all notes and coins issued by the BSP are legal tender in the Philippines for all debts, both public and private. The BSP Monetary Board, with the approval of the President of the Philippines, is granted the power to prescribe denominations, dimensions, designs, inscriptions, and other characteristics of currencies. The MB is also granted the authority to determine the volume of notes to be printed and coins to be minted. The law provides that all expenses incurred for which shall be for the account of the BSP. Furthermore, the BSP is granted the power to call in for replacement any series or denomination of banknotes which are more than five years old and coins which are more than 10 years old. This is consistent with the practices of central banks around the world. 
The current series of Philippine banknotes first went into circulation more than 10 years ago. The President Duterte approved the design, technical specifications, and features of the 1,000 piece of polymer banknote on 29th October 2021. In the fulfillment of our mandate as the sole issuer of currency, the BSP must ensure that our currency is secure against serious counterfeiting and that the needs of the Filipino people are served. Hence, the BSP continuously seeks ways to improve the quality of Philippine banknotes for the greater good. Public concerns on hygiene, particularly during the height of the pandemic, Together with the advancement in counterfeiting technology and growing awareness and need for environmental sustainability prompted the BSP to search for alternative banknote substrates that are responsive to the emerging needs of Philippine society. Looking at the global trends on banknote substrates, we saw that more and more countries have shifted to polymer banknotes. To date, there are about 56 jurisdictions that have issued polymer banknotes. Therefore, we turn to published research reports, mostly by other central banks, and conducted consultative discussions with some of them. Based on our findings, among the most cited strengths of polymer banknotes is that it is being relatively more difficult to counterfeit, more hygienic, more environment-friendly, durable, and cost-effective. Allow me to expound more on each of the benefits reported by other central banks. On security, polymer banknotes are comparatively more challenging to counterfeit than paper banknotes. Detailed images and more complex security features can be embedded with the use of more advanced and expensive technology that is designed to decrease the likelihood of counterfeiting. In Canada, counterfeit rates decreased from 470 parts per million to only 15 parts per million. In Vietnam, they reported that counterfeit rates dropped by 80%. On being more hygienic, compared to paper banknotes, polymer banknotes are significantly cleaner and can be sanitized with less risk of damage. Its smooth, non-absorptive surface makes it more resistant to water, oil, and dirt. After reviewing the scientific evidence, the Philippine Department of Health also suggested the shift of polymer banknotes to reduce the survival time of bacteria and viruses in banknotes. In the report published in the Virology Journal, entitled The Effect of Temperature on Persistence of SARS-CoV-2 on Common Surfaces, the authors Riddle, etc., reported that the survival time of SARS-CoV-2 was seven days at 30 degrees Celsius, the test condition being similar to our local temperature. On polymer banknotes and three times longer or 21 days on paper banknotes. In another study performed by Vrice Cook et al. in 2010, they reported that in Mexico, the average number of bacteria encountered on polymer banknotes was approximately only 25% of that found on the cotton-based paper banknotes. On lower environmental impact, polymer banknotes have a smaller carbon footprint, lower water and energy usage, and less environmental toxicity. When polymer notes are retired, they can be recycled, unlike paper notes, which are shredded, then burned or sent to landfills. Polymer bank notes are fully recyclable. Consistent with the BSP's commitment to sustainability, retired polymer bank notes will not be disposed in our oceans. Rather, they will be recycled into various products such as school chairs and desks, building components, plant pots, and garden furniture. Polymer banknotes are found to have smaller carbon footprint because of their longer lifespan. 
in the Cradle to Grave study commissioned by the Bank of England and duly certified by the Carbon Trust Standard for Carbon, reported that the global warming potential in terms of greenhouse gas emissions from production of polymer banknotes is up to 53% lower than paper banknotes. Further, polymer banknotes require less water and energy, contributing to conservation of environmental resources. Moreover, in a life cycle study commissioned by the Bank of Canada, which is compliant with the ISO 1440 standards for life cycle assessment, it was found that polymer substrate shows environmental benefits over paper in all phases of its life cycle. First, in the manufacturing phase, since it has to be produced two and a half times less than the paper banknote. Second, in the distribution, since it has to be distributed 2.5 less times and its weight is lighter. And third, in end of life, since the contained carbon in paper banknotes is released as greenhouse gases in landfill or, or in incineration. On durability, polymer banknotes can last at least two and a half times longer than paper banknotes. Malaysia reported that their polymer banknotes last four times its paper predecessor. Mexico and Vietnam reported up to 3.8 times to four times than paper banknotes respectively. With the longer lifespan, polymer notes are more cost-effective than paper notes, leading to lower note issue expenses on the part of central banks. Banknote issue expenses could be reduced by 40 to 60% per experience of other central banks. The Bank of England estimated that the printing of the five and 10 pound notes on polymer rather than on paper reduces production costs by 25%, amounting to around 100 million pounds in savings over a 10 year period. Australia's switch to polymer banknotes resulted to close to $1 billion net savings over the past 25 years in inflation-adjusted terms, not considering the substantial savings from reduced counterfeiting cases. The adoption of polymer substrate is also compatible with the sustainability policy agenda. Based on publicly available information on jurisdictions that have fully adopted polymer substrate, all of them have robust environmental protection laws, including sustainable use of plastic. Aside from the durability and longer lifespan, recyclable property of polymer allows it to have more than one life. That is, the manufacture of banknotes does not represent the end of life for the resource as it can be used to produce other products, creating further value for the society. In order to assess if the claimed benefits apply to Philippine conditions, the BSP, with the approval of the president, embarked on a circulation test of the first polymer piso. The 1,000 piso polymer banknote is being circulated alongside the existing 1,000 piso bills. Hence, no demonetization will occur. The BSP initially released the 1,000 piso polymer banknotes to banks for circulation in the Philippine financial system in April 2022. This initial issuance facilitated the calibrations and adjustments of banks' machines and other devices related to payment systems, such as money counting and sorting machines, cash processing machines, vending machines, automated teller machines, bill acceptors, and other similar devices. The BSP simultaneously provided a comprehensive training and communication program for cash handlers of banks, cash in transits, and machine suppliers. At the end of the circulation test, the BSP aims to acquire significant stakeholder feedback as larger volumes of 1,000 piece notes circulate in the economy. It has developed a polymer evaluation framework that consists of empirical studies to be undertaken no later than 2024. This would help us assess objectively if the reported benefits hold under Philippine condition. Our planned polymer evaluation framework covers the following. 
the carbon footprint analysis or the life cycle analysis. Second is the microbial contamination analysis. Third is perception surveys and sentiment analysis. And last but not least is the banknote lifespan analysis. Even with the documented positive experiences of other jurisdictions with polymer banknotes, the BSP is mindful of the potential impact on the abaca industry. Thus, we also analyze the value chain and the magnitude of abaca content of our banknotes to make sure that we are comparing apples to apples in the reckoning of the potential impact. Our existing paper banknote substrate is composed of 80% cotton and 20% abaca. Abaca farmers do not directly supply abaca to the BSP for the production of cotton abaca banknotes. Instead, they supply abaca pulp to various processors and exporters. The local accredited abaca suppliers then export abaca pulp to foreign specialty paper manufacturers abroad, among which are banknote paper manufacturers that have the machinery and expertise in converting abaca pulp to banknote paper. At present, the BSP has two accredited local abaca pulp suppliers, namely the Pulp Specialties Philippines Incorporated, or PSPI, and the Albay Agro-Industrial Development Corporation, or Alindeco. The BSP then imports the banknote paper or outsourced finished banknotes from foreign manufacturers. The share of the estimated abaca content of Philippine banknotes to total volume of abaca fiber production in 2020 is just around 2%. Meanwhile, the share of abaca content of our banknotes to abaca export earnings is less than 2% at its peak. That is, when the BSP had multi-year procurement. There was no procurement of banknote paper materials and finished banknotes in 2021, given that the existing inventory are deemed sufficient to meet the tempered forecast demand for banknotes. The circulation test of 500 million pieces of 1,000 piece of polymer banknote is estimated to affect 0.2 to 0.4% of abaca farming jobs that is 210 to 481 jobs, and 0.1 to 0.2% of abaca export revenues, that is from 8.5 to 17 million pesos. The estimates were based on the assumption that abaca suppliers have no alternative markets. That is, it is a do-nothing scenario. However, the BSP fully recognizes the vast potentials and growth opportunities given the large global demand. To quote the Philippine Abaca Industry Roadmap for 2021 to 2025, the growing global interest and acceptability for green products open urgent and endless opportunities for natural fibers as these are alternative resources that can be utilized for a wide range of applications especially for the pulp and paper industry, in the composite market, textile, and even in lifestyle products and other industries. The emergent green economy is creating a global demand of an estimated 3 million metric tons of natural fibers. Based on 2021 market analysis report of Grandview Research, the global demand exceeds global supply with a shortfall of 25,000 metric tons in 2019. The longer lifespan of the polymer banknotes would translate into lower replacement costs, hence higher production cost savings. Using data on the actual volume of 2021 new banknote withdrawals by banks from the BSP, and lifespan assumptions ranging from two and a half times to four times longer than that of paper, estimated production savings amount to 1.2 to 2.4 billion pesos, holding other factors constant. Higher production savings would redound to higher net profits 
50% of which accrues to the national government. Higher dividend remittance to national government can then be used to fund government's economic and social programs. One possible use is support for Filfida's Abaca flagship project, the Abaca Tuxi Buying Special Project, that will produce higher quality abaca and boost farm and income productivity by at least 100%. The Abaca Tuxi Buying Special Project aims to establish integrated centers where farmers can assess modern production techniques to increase farm yields, more efficient processing equipment, as well as better access to market through the GDE co-located in these centers. Other alternative uses include funding more hospital beds, classrooms, number of household beneficiaries of four-piece program, mass housing units, etc. This scenario assumes that the volume of new banknotes issued in 2021 will go into polymer circulation test. Estimates of replacement cost savings range from a low of 32 centavos to a high of 1 peso and 55 centavos per banknote, equivalent to 1.26 to 4 billion pesos. In closing, allow me to summarize the key takeaways from this presentation. The BSP's polymer project is within the bounds of the mandate granted to the BSP by the Constitution and the new Central Bank Act. Its implementation is anchored on the approval of the President of the Republic in October 2021. The decision is supported by research on the experiences of other jurisdictions, which reported that polymer banknotes have longer lifespan, lower counterfeiting incidents, lower microbial contamination, more cost-effective, lower resource usage, and recyclable. We also coordinated with other central banks. We also evaluated the potential impact on the abaca industry under a do-nothing scenario. But there are vast emerging opportunities to widen and diversify the client and product base. Filfida has a comprehensive program that seeks to raise income and quality and volume of abaca production. With the support of key government agencies, the abaca industry could position itself in the emergent green economy and in the manufacture of personal pro protective equipment, or PPE. Moreover, the BSP will also assess if the claimed benefits apply to Philippine conditions when substantial volume of the 1,000 piece of polymer banknotes have been fully circulating. Thank you very much and good morning, uh, your honorable senators. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the, thank you to the BSP for your uh, very comprehensive presentations. At this point, I'd like to ask our colleagues uh, if they would uh, like to ask questions, uh, we have uh, for the first to arrive was Senator Bongo. So, if uh, Senator uh, Senator Go, okay. Uh, next to ask is uh, Senator Coco Pimentel, uh, Senator. Uh, siguro, uh, and, uh, maybe he's, uh, let's give him a few minutes. But in the meantime, we also have Senator Robin Hood Padilla with us who might want to ask some questions, Senator. Uh, Mr. Chair, may, may I be uh, recognized? 
May I ask you sa please I uh, may ask you to identify uh, yourself. Oh, sorry, this is uh, uh, Deputy Governor Mamerto Tangonan of the BSP. Uh, yes, yes, please proceed. Please proceed. Yes. Uh, Your Honor, there were other matters raised during the uh, uh, privileged privilege speech and in the ensuing uh, discussion. Um, if if uh, the honorable senators would uh, agree, we would be happy to uh, present um, to to respond to those uh, other issues raised, Your Honor. Yes, please proceed. So, uh, Your Honor, next we would like to uh, uh, present uh, to the honorable senators uh, the rationale uh, behind the change in the visual design of the 1,000 peso polymer banknotes. To present uh, your honor is uh, Managing Director Tony Lambino. Yes, please proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Honorable Senators. This presentation is on the design of the new 1,000 peso polymer banknote. The design of the polymer banknote was selected to promote environmental sustainability. It features the Philippine eagle, the country's national bird, which is a symbol of Filipino pride and identity, but regrettably an endangered species. We hope that through this new design, Filipinos will be reminded of our duties and responsibilities as stewards of the natural environment and the need for everyone to contribute to the sustainability agenda given the pressing challenges of climate change and other environmental risks. The new 1,000 peso polymer banknote has the same size and color as the existing 1,000 peso paper banknotes. The name of the Philippine Eagle featured on the 1,000 peso polymer banknote is imbulog, which means to soar. The Philippine Eagle is one of the rarest eagles in the world, which can only be seen in the Philippines. It is also considered to be one of the largest and most powerful among forest raptors. According to the Philippine Eagle Foundation, the Philippine Eagle is listed as critically endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, with an estimated number of not more than 400 pairs left in the wild. Imbulog is among them. Imbulog is also a captive eagle at the Philippine Eagle Center in Davao. It spans over seven feet and stands nearly four feet tall. The photographer of the Philippine Eagle portrait used in the 1,000 peso polymer banknote hopes that his photo will inspire Filipinos to save the Philippine Eagle from extinction. This is not the first time we are featuring the Philippine Eagle in our currency. It was featured in the 50 centavo coin that was in circulation for decades. It was also featured in the 500 peso commemorative coin issued in 2018 to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the BSP. The BSP has featured both our heroes and our natural environment in currency designs over decades. Adopting these two themes highlights our national heritage and numismatic artistry. We would like to note that the BSP has printed and minted more than 60 circulated currencies featuring national heroes. The selection of currency design themes is cyclical and we feature our sources of national pride at various times and using different denominations. For example, you may recall that Lapu-Lapu was featured on the one centavo coin decades ago, and now he is on the 5,000 peso 
commemorative banknote. At present, the one centavo coin carries the endemic flora theme, featuring the mangkono or Philippine ironwood, a species of plant endemic to the islands of the Visayas, Palawan, and northeastern Mindanao. The tree is rare and is classified as vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or the IUCN, due to overharvesting and habitat loss. The BSP believes that national heroes and endemic flora and fauna, especially endangered species, are deeply important to the Filipinos' cultural and heritage promotion and preservation, and both are worthy of being celebrated through our coins and banknotes. Other countries also feature various designs in their banknotes in addition to heroes and personalities. The Euro banknotes feature windows and doorways to symbolize the European spirit of openness and cooperation. The Russian ruble features important landmarks in Russia, such as the Rusky Bridge, the Stochny Cosmodrome, Monument to the Sunken Ships, Khabarovsk Bridge, John the Bast Baptist Church, among others. The Swiss franc depicts organizational prowess, vibrant, a vibrant cultural scene, the wealth of experiences, humanitarian tradition, and track record as a research hub. The hand illustrates the theme of each note through an action. For example, on the 50 franc note, the hand holds a dandelion, its seeds scattering in a puff. The hand on the 20 franc note holds a prism refracting light, while the 10 franc note shows an orchestra conductor's hands keeping time with her baton. Hong Kong dollars feature important events and festivals that they celebrate in the country, such as the Establishment Day, Mid-Autumn Festival, Spring Lantern Festival, among others. Argentinian banknotes feature anima animals like the jaguar, whale, and taruca, which is a type of deer. With this series, the Central Bank of Argentina aims to raise awareness of the biodiversity and environmental protection in their country. For example, the jaguar was selected as it is deemed a, natura, a, a national natural monument in Argentina, one of the most important categories in terms of preservation as it is a critically endangered species. Only around 250 jaguars have been calculated to exist in the country. The Brazilian real features a figure wearing a crown of bay leaves and fauna. Through history, this effigy has often been used in allegoric paintings and sculptures displayed in government buildings throughout Brazil, as well as being used on Brazilian coins and banknotes. So here are some of the major uh, reasons for the design, uh, design selection, as well as examples from other countries in terms of their own currency designs. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honors. Thank you, uh, Your much. Honor. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, uh, if, if it would be in the pleasure of the uh, honorable senators, we can also uh, present the uh, to address or to respond to the uh, topic on uh, varying interest rates and exchange rates that was also raised during the um, privileged speech, Your Honor. Yes, please proceed. Mr. Chairman. It's Senator Pia Cayetano. Hello, oh yeah, for, sorry. Um, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Pia Cayetano. Yes, Thank I'll you. proceed. Um, Mr. Senator. Chairman, 
Mr. Chairman, um, I was listening earlier, and my I just have a few questions on the sustainability. So can I ask my questions before the next presentation? Yes, yes, yes. Please proceed. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, yes, as I was saying, good good morning to all, no, to the BSP um, team that's present today. I, I heard your presentations earlier. I was listening intently, and um, they are quite consistent with the um, the information that we had um, that was available to us um, at the time that the privileged speech of uh, the minority floor leader, Senator Coco Pimentel was delivered. Although I'd like to thank you for providing more information. There was more detail um, provided <clears throat> on the issue. So thank you for that. Um, but I would just like to go to a few points on sustainability. Um, I chair the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. So my interventions are usually um, precisely to ask the agencies if we are really looking at the entire picture and looking at the sustainable development goals that we have, if we are using the resources we have to balance those different interests. So I note, um, listening carefully to the presentation, that um, in the view of BSP, basing it on studies conducted by other um, similar agencies in other countries, the view taken by BSP is that the the shift to polymer notes is a sustainable move move right that that is the the that is the um the overall theme that I receive is that correct yes your honor yes sorry who's answering sorry the the photo is the the camera is not focused on the speaker so at least I know who I'm talking to your Honor, this is uh, uh, BSP Deputy Governor Mamerto Tangonan. Hello, hello, Deputy Governor. Thank you. Yes, I, I I recognize your voice. No, you you made you made the you you were speaking earlier. So so that is the position you take, and I just like to go into that a little bit. No, um, you mentioned that through the shift, uh, polymer is more um, sustainable because of the use of less water. Um, the the carbon footprint is smaller and that um, you can then recycle it into chairs, etc., tables, etc., right? That, that is the statement you made, no? That's, ac yes. that's fairly accurate. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. And my, but my question is, um, polymer is not in itself a biodegradable, it's not biodegradable, right? As opposed to abaca and and cotton, which are the main uh, ingredients of um, the current paper that we use, because um, this, is, this probably is more science than, 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 um, than I am trained for, so I like to listen to the experts offhand. Polymer is not biodegradable, so there are ways that you can recycle it, but it is not biodegradable. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. Yes. So in that sense, it is not truly sustainable. I mean, there are different ways we define sustainability. No? So, of course, reusing is one way. and it, it is in a better direction than not, but um, it is not biodegradable, as opposed to abaca and cotton. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And if I may, although it is not uh, biodegradable, Your Honor, but it can be converted to other uh, useful uh, yes, uses yes. of. Uh, yes, I gathered that, and thank you for, for you did you did mention that. Um, I was listening very intently because it boils down to these kind of issues. No, there's a lot of things that we can produce out of plastic. Um, one of the biggest issues. Um, is collection, no? So I, I'm shifting, no, just to have, have a general discussion on this. So, for example, for the use of pet bottles, um, other other um, other um, products that can supposedly be broken down and reused, the difficulty is in the collection. So, in the case of um, bills, uh, that problem will be eliminated because when you then um, retire old bills, people surrender it to you. No? So in terms of collection, that's not, that's not that big of a problem. And then you can proceed to, um, to repurpose it in, in, the, in the examples that you gave. Is that correct? Uh, yes, Your Honor. There, there's currently uh, an effective uh, system by which 
uh, unfit banknotes, Your Honor, are uh, collected and uh, surrendered to the BSP uh, for the BSP to uh, dispose of them properly, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. And that makes it that that, that does make this that, that that does simplify it compared to other um, plastic products that are in the market. And then we claim that oh, but we can reuse it, but the collection has been. Um, and I think we may have an environment. I hope I hope the committee has invited environmentalists to discuss this. No, as I know that is one issue that we have. Um, let me go to another one. No, um, and and I note all the other um, um, points you raise for sustainability on lower carbon footprint, uh, less use of water, so on and so forth. Um, that I just have to rely on the facts, um, on the data. I, I have no way of of confirming that. I'd also like to be able to listen later on to the other um, th those who have different concerns, no, so that we can. Um, address that. But what I do want to point out, Mr. Chairman, uh, before I leave that point, I'll emphasize that it is still not biodegradable. So when we look at the sustainability um, picture, we always have to take those different factors into concern. No, So it may, in fact, use more water. I don't know it for a fact. I'm just relying on the data you provided. It may have a smaller carbon footprint, but it will not biodegrade it will still be there and remain. It is a product we created and it will stay there forever, um, as opposed to Abaca and Cotton. The other SDG um, sustainable development goal that I would like to point out, Your Honors, um, Deputy Governor, is sustainable development goal number eight, which is decent work. So I think, um, I, I think you know where I'm going here. Decent work requires that we support our industries, no? Um, and, and one of those industries is the abaca industry. So when we look again at the whole sustainability of this program, we also look at how it affects work. And I do know, again, I listened intently. I also read um, the materials that I had um, during the privileged speech because I also had a resolution that I drafted, um, but I didn't get to file it yet because I was actually still studying the issue. So, but... But for that reason, I had studied this issue. So sustainable development goal is decent work and economic growth. And there is an impact to the Abaca farmers. I noted uh, how you um, expressed that uh, there are other ways to help the farmers that only a small percent of are affected. I listened, so I am conscious of that. But the fact remains that there is an effect. And maybe um, if I look at another SDG goal, which I'd like to... Um, I'd like to include to to present the the complete picture is um, the abaca farmers and the products that they make are form an integral part of our history and maybe in a way our culture because we have always been known to be abaca exporters. Um, interestingly, nga yung Manila folder pala, no, came from that um, history. I was um, I was pleasantly surprised to be educated on that. So knowing that this is a big part, abaca production is a big part of who we are, um, there have been decisions made in the past um, on other issues in our country and in other countries where they preserve the use of um, a certain product despite um, there being technology that is available to move towards a different way of production because the original way of producing um, symbolizes who we are as a people. So that's another reason that should just always be taken in consideration. I'm not trying to to um, to to minimize the the advantages that you have presented for polymer. I am simply trying to present the complete picture coming from the sustainable development goals which I chair. No, so decent work and um, uh, economic growth is a part of it, and it. It affects who we are um, as a people because uh, Abaca production has been with us for a long time. Um, I think I will mention sustainable development goal number 11 because sustainable communities um, is part of who the Abaca farmers belong to. We want to have them 
continue to be a sustainable community. Um, and when we take away a part of what they rely on for work, then that affects their sustainability as a farming community. And um, it may actually not be be totally sustainable because you're trans you're you're shifting to a product as I said that is not biodegradable. Um, and then I wanted to point out that sustainable um, goal um, on good health, um, as you mentioned, uh, you got the green light from the DOH. No, is that correct? Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, it was reviewed by the D the research materials were reviewed by the DOH, and they rendered an opinion, Your Honor, that it's uh, better for the Philippines, Your Honor. Yes. Um, I note that because, and I appreciate that the work that you did there because I I like the fact that you've looked at the different aspects. No, so so if that is in fact um, a positive thing, then we have to recognize that. And um, it's something that I commend you for, for looking at that. But yun nga lang, yung sa communities natin and um, the digging further into the definition um, of sustainability, I think that's something that you might want to look at. So those are basically the main points that I wanted to raise because it is very possible that um, these points may affect your decision. Um, as I said, I wish I wish I had examples, no. But um, if I come up with something, I will be happy to share it with the with the committee. But I am so certain that there are um, decisions that we have made. Oh, let, let me just talk of um, historical and cultural preservation. Many times, by law, we actually um, we actually uh, protect um, um, uh, what do you call this? Um, uh buildings or or other um structures that are 50 years of age or older uh we give it the benefit of the doubt that they may have cultural significance now i see i see the deputy governor nodding his head so you're familiar with that so it's not a it's not set in stone no it has to be assessed by the experts pero parang ganun din if there is a practice that we have that also and i appreciate um uh the presentation by my good friend tony lambino on uh, the use of the eagle and uh, how other countries use symbol use designs that are personal to them. Mm -hmm. So ganun din, di ba? It's also personal to us, the use of um, abaka as a fabric. Um, it, it is your job uh, in the Central Bank. Thank you also for for the, the very thorough presentation on uh, the mandate that you have on this. On our part naman on the legislature, we also look into these issues in aid of legislation. So that is just my role. I'm trying to find a balance here. Um, I have often been in situations where I need to propose legislation that balances the interests of different groups, and sometimes they are conflicting. Uh, uh, there may be reasons that point to one decision versus another, but I'm always happy to hear all the reasons that may help me make a better decision. So that's really just the reason we are sharing this uh, with the BSP. Um, I think um, that is all um, for now. I'll just finally read into the record. I mentioned sustainable um, cities and communities earlier. I just want to read that because I think that may be a pivotal um, um, factor in, in any decision that we make on changing uh, the use of abaca in our money. No? Um, culture has a crucial role to play in SDG 11. Making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, reliant, and sustainable. Specifically, Target 11.4 calls for strengthening efforts to protect and safeguard the world's cultural and natural heritage. So I'll build that into the argument also that we there is a special role that the use of um, Abaca has for us. Um, by the way, that was a quote from UNESCO. So yun lang, Mr. Chairman, I will continue to monitor and uh, learn from this. Thank you for calling this hearing. Thank you then, um, sa BSP. And I'd like to hear from the other, I'll, I'll be monitoring the 
we, we Mr. Chairman, you will still hear the other resource persons pa naman, ano, on, on those who have concerns about the use of abaca. Is that correct? Yes, you'll be hearing from the producers of abaca. And uh, okay. so we will after uh, after some questions from other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you po sa lahat. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Cayetano. At this point, uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Senator Robin Hood Padilla for some questions. Mabuhay po. Isang uh, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyo. Mahal na tagapangulo at uh, sa atin pong mga kasamang uh, uh, senador, kay Ma'am uh, Pia Cayetano na tunay pong uh, pinalalakas ang uh, produktong ating at yung sinasabi pong sustainability at uh, syempre po sa ating pong mga bisita sa Bangko Sentral ng Pilipinas at uh, iba pong mga resource uh, speakers. Ang tanong ko po ay uh, hindi ko na po padadagdagan yung patungkol po dyan sa anong material. Ano? Ang akin lang pong uh, concern ay patungkol po doon sa... Babalik din po ba sa ating mga bayani ang design? Ngayon po kasi nasa Philippine Eagle, napakaganda naman po noon. Ano? Pero babalik din po ba sa ating mga bayani ang design? Your Honor, this is uh, BSP Deputy Governor Mamerta Tanganan. Um, may I be recognized? Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, in response, uh, Your Honor, um, the the design of uh, our uh, currencies are cyclical. So um, we've been uh, using heroes in the previous years. Um, we have used flora and fauna in the past. And uh, this time, uh, Your Honor, uh, we... Um, we will be using again the uh, uh, with the eagle. Of course, it's an endangered uh, indigenous Philippine species that we are all uh, proud of, uh, Your Honor. So um, it's it's cyclical, Your Honor. Ah, uh, ibig po bang sabihin hindi na po babalik sa ating mga bayani? Magtutuloy-tuloy na po ito sa iba pang uh, Ano natin? Hindi lang sa 1,000? Uh, Your Honor, uh, pwede ho siyang uh, bumalik uh, sa theme uh, ng mga heroes, uh, Your Honor. Um, kasi uh, cyclical po yung paggamit natin ng designs uh, on, on the elements and components that uh, the Filipino people and uh, its culture are so proud of. Opo, opo. Kasi maganda naman po yan. Yung uh, Philippine Eagle, hindi nga po ako kumukontra dyan. Eh. Dahil kailangan talagang malaman ng mga Pilipino na meron tayo talagang uh, Philippine Eagle. Ano? At yan, eh, kilala. At uh, yun na nga, sinabi nyo, medyo endangered na. Pero napakahalaga po ng ating mga bayani. Dahil uh, parte po yan ng edukasyon. Ano? Kasi ang alam ko, ang pera, lagi mo yan nakikita eh. Ano man ng iyong edad, ano man ng iyong kasarian, ang pera, lagi mong siguro hindi lang oras-oras, kundi minuminuto na nakikita mo yan sa harap mo. At napakahalaga yung nakalagay dyan ay nakapagtuturo kung saan ba tayo galing at sino ba yung pinagkakautangan ng uh, ating kalayaan. At uh, mahalaga na alam ng mga kababayan natin kung sino ang mga ito. Alam nyo po ba sa isang uh, programa, sa telebisyon po ito, ha? tinanong ang kabataan kung sino ang gumburza. Hindi nila alam. Tinanong kung sino si Apolinaryong Mabini. Hindi rin nila alam. Nakakalungkot po yan. Opo, kaya ang akin pong uh, pakiusap sa atin pong Central Bank na pagkatapos niyong pagyamanin ang uh, ating mga endangered uh, species na 
atin pong ikinararangal at uh, pinagmamalaki. At yan din po ay uh, sa turismo din naman yan. Na kailangan-kailangan din. Uh, halimbawa, may pumunta dito mga turista at uh, nagpapalit ng pera. Nakikita din nila na ah, ito pala ang mga species sa Pilipinas. Maganda din po yun. Pero ang isang kahilingan ko lang po, huwag mo pong tatanggalin ang ating mga bayani diyan sa pera natin. Yun lamang po. Uh, maraming salamat. Meron po akong uh, off-topic na tatanungin. Pero baka oh, masyado pong off-topic ito, mahal na uh, chairman, dahil patungkol po ito sa pera at uh, sa banknote natin. Baka po siguro mamayang konti na lang kapag tapos na po magsalita lahat. Meron lang po akong off-topic po ito, eh, mahal na chairman. Okay maraming salamat po. Okay, okay lang, Senator. May privilege ka naman na... Uh... Tanungin ko anong gusto mong tanungin. Uh, okay lang, Senator, you, eh, kung, kahit na medyo off, top, off topic. Ah, sige po, maraming salamat po, Chairman. Tanong ko lang po sana yung patungkol po doon sa... Meron po kasi tayong Republic Act number no. 11439, an act providing for the regulation and organization of Islamic Bank. Ito po ay naisa batas noong August 22, 2019. Tanungin ko lang po sana sa atin pong mga mahal na kasama po sa Central Bank kung kamusta na po ngayon ang uh, Islamic Banking po sa Pilipinas. Your Honor, um, the concerned uh, resource uh, person who is uh, looking after the Uh, financial supervision sector is not uh, with us this morning, uh, Your Honor. Uh, but um, um, upon request of the Honorable Senators, uh, we may um, return and, and uh, with, the, with the concerned resource person and expound on this uh, uh, topic more, Your Honor. Po, mar maraming salamat po, uh, ginoong pangalawang tagapangulo po ng uh, Central Bank. Yun lamang po, aking mahal na kabats, aking mahal na tagapangulo, Senator Mark Villar. Uh, antayin ko na lang po kung kailan po pwede medyo off topic nga po. Pasensya na po, maraming salamat po. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Senator Padilla. And if I can request also, if the Bank of Central can furnish uh, Senator Padilla with a update on the on his question about the islamic banking so um, can, if we can request please uh, an update on his uh, his uh, concern we will do so your honor uh, anyway at this point uh, you wanted to make a brief present I, i believe the bsp wanted to make a brief presentation on uh, another issue that was taken up during the privileged speech uh, uh yes Yes, uh, please proceed. But let's make it brief because we still have to hear from the other stakeholders, the Abaka producers. So uh, you can uh, please uh, uh, proceed with your presentation. But let's uh, uh, keep in mind that we have our limited time also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, this is in response to one of the topics raised during uh, the privileged speech. And to present it, Your Honor, is our Senior Assistant Governor, uh, Illuminada Sika. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Uh, my name is uh, Senior Assistant Governor Illuminada Sika. Uh, during the last hearing, there were questions raised on the issues regarding the BSP's monetary policy decisions and on the recent depreciation of the peso. Before I begin with my presentation, I would like to express that the recent monetary policy actions of the BSP involving series of increases in policy rates is directed to address the persistent increase in domestic inflation and the weakening of the Philippine peso amid the very aggressive monetary tightening of the U.S. Fed as it battles its own inflation problem. The BSP has been responding uh, to the challenge of rising inflation in recent months. Headline inflation started to rise in March 2022 and has reached 6.9% in September driven by a combination of uh, many factors. One is the increase in global commodity prices, both for oil and non-oil commodities, aggravated by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Aside from the external factors, production shocks in the form of weather disturbances, such as typhoons and other um, 
uh, natural causes, uh, the animal diseases, uh, specifically from the African swine fever to bird flu, and the weak output amid still recovering industry have also contributed to faster inflation. Lastly, given the imported share of domestic consumption, the depreciation of the peso following the aggressive rate hikes from the U.S. has also exerted upward pressure on prices to some extent. The persistent supply-side constraints resulted to a broadening price pressure as shown in the rising core inflation, indicated as the blue line in the left chart. Core inflation measures the rate of increases of prices of commodities in the CPI basket, but excluding the selected volatile food and energy items, in order to depict the underlying demand-side price pressures. Data on core inflation rose markedly in August and September to 4.6% and 4.5% respectively. This also reflects the impact of emerging second-round effects following the approval of transport fare and wage hikes. Another metric to measure this is by looking at the number of CPI items uh, shown here on the uh, right side of the chart. With inflation rates above target numbering 350, uh, numbering um, increasing uh, out of the 315, in September 2022, items with above target uh, inflation rose to 169 uh, at the six-digit level. This number accounts for over half of the total CPI basket at 51.3%. Against a scenario of persistent elevated inflation, external headwinds, and a robust domestic economic uh, recovery, the BSP has responded by tightening its monetary policy stance. Recovering, uh, responding decisively and based on the latest information was necessary to help anchor the domestic inflation expectations amid the broadening price pressures. The emergence of second round effects and potential spillovers from the external environment uh, also contributed to the emergence of the uh, price pressures. I would like to note that the other central banks also responded to the same challenges. While the BSP has now effectively reversed its pandemic-induced re uh, reductions in policy rate, the BSP stance is still not too restrictive as the policy rate is still not much higher than the level seen prior to the pandemic. Moreover, based on assessment, our strong economic performance during the first half of 2022 provides us some scope for up upward policy rate adjustment. The BSP is fully aware that recent policy measures of the BSP are expected to entail some trade-offs. Specifically, monetary policy tightening may reduce depreciation pressures and lower inflation, but it could also dampen domestic growth. In the long term, real interest rates could discourage household spending and expansion due to higher cost of funding. I would like to emphasize, however, that while funding costs will likely rise in the near term due to the policy rate hikes. The primary risk to investment and labor market emanates from the broadening price pressures, the global headwinds caused by the slowdown in the country's major trading partners, as well as the lingering uncertainty from the pandemic. The BSP raised its policy rates in recent months in order to temper price pressures and prevent them from having long-term implications. Three factors drove the Monetary Board's decision. Inflation outlook, uh, expectation of what inflation would be moving forward, and strength of the domestic economy. On inflation projections, latest baseline forecasts indicate that inflation could settle above the government's target range of 2 to 4% for 2022 and 2023. Inflation would decelerate and return to the midpoint of the target range at 3% by 2024. The persistently elevated inflation is not an issue that is specific to the BSP or among other regional central bank peers. Advanced economy uh, central banks are also facing broadening uh, price pressures. Central banks with elevated or above target inflation rates are tightening monetary policy rapidly in order to moderate or lower demand and align it with supply. 
As shown in, the, uh, in this chart, most of the central banks that we monitor tighten monetary policy amid soaring prices. The green bars uh, represent the actual inflation rate of selected countries, while the red line shows the target inflation of each country. You can see from the chart that actual inflation in countries presented have exceeded that their inflation target except for China. In the case of the BSP, we also tightened our monetary policy settings by raising the short-term interest rate to combat rapidly rising prices as well as to prevent inflation expectations from being disanchored and price pressures from panning further second round effects. The current movements of the peso remain heavily influenced by broad dollar gains amid the aggressive policy tightening by the U.S. Fed, concerns over the protracted conflict between Russia and Ukraine, as well as the deterioration in the global growth outlook. On the domestic front, the country's widening trade and current account deficit and elevated inflation rate likewise added to the downward pressure on the peso. On a year-to-date basis, the peso depreciated against the U.S. dollar by 13.56% to close at 59 pesos per dollar uh, last October 17 from the end December 2021 closing rate. While the policy rate adjustment by the BSP and participation in foreign exchange market are perceived to be effective in tempering the depreciation pressures, concerns on the continued sizable U.S. Fed rate hike, and the ensuing narrowing of policy rate differential between the BSP and the U.S. Fed are expected to drive inv investors towards the U.S. dollar as a safe haven asset. Recent pressures in the foreign exchange market are not unique to the peso with other peer currencies in the region also seeing a pronounced depreciation. The currencies of major economies, including the euro, the British pound, and the Japanese yen, have likewise weakened, weakened against the US dollar. So what has been the, the Philippine uh, BSP's uh, action in managing the peso depreciation? The BSP responded by raising interest rates aggressively while also participating in the FX market although at a lesser extent than some of the neighboring economies. The approach has been to smooth out excess daily volatility rather than defend a specific level or trend of the peso. We believe that the double-barreled response of the BSP was appropriate to ensure orderly market condition and reduce excessive short-term volatility in the exchange rate market. Nonetheless, the BSP will always be ready to participate in the foreign exchange market only to ensure orderly market condition and reduce excessive short-term volatility. The BSP is also prepared to utilize other tools to respond to fluctuations in exchange rate and to ensure that legitimate demand for foreign currency is satisfied. These include liquidity enhancing and management tools such as the US dollar repo facility, the exporter's dollar and yen rediscount facility, and the enhanced currency rate risk protection program. The BSP has also access to international financial arrangements, which it can draw on uh, that can provide insurance against crisis and financing to mitigate uh, their impact. The BSP has likewise pre-deployed non-monetary measures to respond to challenges of maintaining financial stability. These policies are already in place to contain the risk-taking behavior of financial intermediaries in good times. Looking ahead, the Philippine peso is expected to be supported by sustained foreign exchange inflows that could help counterbalance the pressures on the currency. Aside from the ample gross international reserves, the projected recovery in structural foreign exchange inflows uh, receipts from remittances, from business process outsourcing, and from tourism revenues, as well as inflows coming from foreign investment, can help provide insulation against the spillovers from the policy normalization in advanced economies, as well as geopolitical conflict between Russia and Ukraine. To summarize, 
we will continue to reiterate that the BSP will make consideration to external development such as the U.S. Fed policy action and that of other central banks insofar as their effect would be on inflation. Our assessment was that the continued depreciation of the peso would have already affected the prices of goods, more so given that the Philippines is a net importer. The higher cost of these imported commodities is passed on to further stages of the production process, consequently raising the price of goods and services. I would also like to emphasize that the BSP had to be proactive in its monetary policy responses for us to ensure inflation will remain manageable moving forward. The impact of our policy interventions may take time and come with the objective of preventing any lingering price pressure. Nevertheless, the BSP will continue to monitor the developing situation both here and abroad. We will remain supportive of the national government's effort to implement non-monetary measures in addressing supply side issues. But the BSP is also prepared to take further action to bring inflation back to target and prevent any lingering price pressures. Any, any policy interventions will continue to be data-driven and guided by our latest outlook on inflation and growth. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for uh, giving us this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for that presentation. And it's uh, it's good to know that the BSP is on top of the situation, especially with the uh, given. Uh, of course, there are certain international uh, uh, the the interest rates increase in the U.S. that are beyond our control. There are events that are beyond our control that are creating uh, the depreciation of the peso. But it's good to know that the BSP is on top of things, and especially the inflation. I saw I saw in the chart there's some, uh, you're responding. I hope the the increase in our uh, interest rates locally can already um, reverse the trend of the increase in inflation. Hopefully, it will be enough. So I hope, uh, hopefully, in the maybe in future hearings, you can give us an update on how effective our, our steps have been in uh, curbing inflation and also hopefully stabilizing the peso. Uh, at this point, I think it's, it's, it, we'd like to hear also from the stakeholders, from the uh, fiber and abaca industry. Uh, at this point, I'd like to recognize the Phil Fida, and, uh, and I'd like to call them to please uh, present. But please also, uh, we're also limited in our time, so if we can make the presentation as, uh, as uh, succinct as possible, please. Uh, make an effort to make uh, summarize the major points. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we'd like to uh, recognize the Philippine Fiber Industry Development, Development Authority. Uh, yes, good morning, Po. Uh, this is Robert Atchensa from Pilpida, Po. Uh, can we share? Ms. Amor, please uh, present the presentation of Bill Paida. Yes, uh, please continue and uh, let's uh, please keep it as um, efficient as possible. Kami na kasi yung... Yes, uh, good morning po. This is the response of the uh, position or the PILPIDA's position on the BSP's plan. Uh, we prepared this position paper way back in uh, 2021 when uh, uh, we heard that uh, the BSP will be uh, uh, using the polymer for the 1,000 piece note. So uh, the presentation will be about the Abaka in Philippine banknotes, paper banknotes, polymer banknotes, and the importance of abaka in the Philippine economy and uh, the conclusion. Ms. Amor, next. Yes, uh, for the introduction, uh, the BSP introduced the uh, cotton abaca blend in 2001. This is a result of the study 
wherein uh, there was a request from the abaca industry sector to use abaca as part of our uh, bank notes. So uh, based on the study of the uh, based on the studies conducted by BSP, we were able to produce the BSP were able to uh, produce the abaca cotton blend, which is eighty percent cotton and twenty percent abaca. So, uh, but uh, during this, after that period, there was a time now that BSP also planned to use polymer way back in 2009. But uh, Senator Manny Villar, the father of our current uh, committee chair, is, uh, is opposed this uh, plan then of the uh, BSP to use polymer. So uh, he strongly advocated the use of ABACA in the Philippine banknotes in his resolution in the 14th Congress of the Republic of the Philippines in 2009. But uh, th thus, uh, in 2021, the PA is again contemplating on the ship from paper banknotes to polymer, wherein it is now being circulated. Next. So, uh, as I have said earlier, uh, there was a study uh, by even by the BSP on the use of the Philippine bank notes. And based on their study, uh, they produce 80% cotton and 20% abaca based on the following characteristics. Uh, the high folding endurance, tear resistance, tensile strength, wet strength, and burst, bursting strength of the paper note. So based on these uh, characteristics, we, pro we produce the 80% and 20% cotton banknote. Next. Uh, the paper banknotes are also being used in many other countries, like uh, for Japan, it is the made from oriental paper brass, abaca pulp, and other fibers. For the US, it is 85% uh, linen and 75% cotton. And for the Philippines, it is 80% and 20% abaca. Uh, based on these studies, uh, the commonly, banknotes are commonly made from cotton blend and can survive a spin cycle in washing machine. Uh, the, it has also long, long, long lifespan and uh, eco-friendly and composted in a manner similar to food waste, which was uh, mentioned by the by Senator P Pia. And then, uh, majority, as of now, the majority of countries still stick to paper currency. Japan is still using specialty papers in their banknotes. The European Central Banks decided to stick to paper banknotes for security and cost aspects, as it was decided that cotton paper is the best material for your banknotes. And uh, based on the lifespan study uh, for the US, one, one peso dollar is equivalent to, has an estimated lifespan of 6.6 years, while for $100, it is 22.9 years. So we can still say that uh, banknotes uh, made from uh, uh, fiber materials are, have also long lifespan. Next. The world's first polymer bank note was the 10% commemorative notes issued in January 18, 1988 to commemorate the Australian bicentenary. Uh, the countries shifting to polymer bank notes, as I stated by the central bank, uh, apparently due to resistance to water or waterproof, longer lifespan, can, or it can stand extreme temperatures, and more eco friendly due to longer lifespan and recyclability. On the other hand, polymer banknotes are sticky and slippery when wet, thus less comfortable to hold, count, and transfer. It is costly for the banks and other institutions. Assorting machines will have to be modified or updated. Uh, there was once uh, during a somebody told us that uh, when he when he or she withdrew uh, in the ATM and uh, the banknote was made from a polymer. Uh, 
she found out that uh, the polymer easily have some uh, scat or somewhere deformed. And then, uh, so we have to, the, uh, the bank should uh, prepare a different ATM, which is, will be costly for the, for the banks. Uh, it is almost three times worse for the environment than their fiber paper equivalents because of the carbon dioxide emissions are higher. While uh, it is said that uh, polymer banknotes are not easily to are not easy to counterfeit, there are some instances that uh, it was also counterfeited, like in Romania. So we can say that uh, the polymer banknotes and the piece of banknotes are and the, the fiber banknotes or the paper banknotes can both be counterfeited. So it is based. Uh, it is the printing agencies that will have to provide a better counterfeit measures. Like uh, Japan uh, was able to, pro according to them, they were able to, to, to have le less, uh, less uh, counterfeit instances to their money because of the measures that they were able to conduct. Next. So the, what is the importance of Abaca in the Philippine economy? Uh, it is, uh, we are the world's biggest supplier co contributing more than 85% of the total world requirement for Abaca fiber in the last 50 years. And we are the top ex export earners of the country. It is also the principal raw materials for the world-renowned world Manila Hope, Manila Road, and one of the country's major pillars in terms of employment generation and exportation exchange earnings. In 2019, Philippines supplied about 86.1 of the world abaca fiber requirement. As materials for Philippine money, abaca fiber is the strongest among natural fibers. Thus, abaca cotton paper banknotes also has outstanding characteristics. It is more, more resistant to salt water decomposition Excellent choice for producing these thin papers of low and high porosity and high strength, and prepared by various industries in the world over man made fibers such as plastic and other synthetic materials. Uh, in terms of uh, the environmental protection, it minimizes soil erosion and sedimentation. Floods and landslides will be prevented as waste holding capacity of the soil is improved, and abaca waste materials are used as organic fertilizer. Abaca plays a vital role in growing abaca advocacy, global advocacy for environmental protection, and forest conservation as there is a strong worldwide interest and acceptability for green and organic products. Next. So in conclusion, in support of the numerous abaca farmers and their dependents, the Philippine Fiber Industry Development Authority therefore appeals to the concerned authorities to reconsider the plan idea of shifting to the use of polymer instead of abacoton for our banknotes currency. That's all po. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Mark Villar. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the to CIDA for that uh, presentation. Uh, at this point, we'd like to recognize uh, to for a presentation the um, Federation of uh, from the Abaca Farmers. We'd like to hear from the Abaca, Abaca Farmers, the Federation on Free Farmers, the FFFC. So please uh, proceed with your presentation. Yeah, uh, maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, unang una po, Juan, let me correct the the. Uh, MC at the beginning. Uh, ako po, Ikwan. Uh, my first name is not Leonor. Last time I checked, wala pa po akong name change. It's Leonardo. <laughs> my, my, my full name is Leonardo Montemayor. Yes, sir. So, I, I, I can see <laughs> uh, nakalagay na po Leonardo po. Sorry. Okay, salamat po. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, tatlo pong major points ang ipipresent ako po. Yung una po, I will talk a little bit on the process. Uh, pangalawa po yung su substansya po ng 
policy ngayon ng BSP tungkol po sa paggamit ng polymer. At yung pong pangatlo, yung pong kwan, it's more of the mindset uh, that, that uh, should accompany, I believe, uh, our discussions on this matter. Tungkol po sa proseso, uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just uh, briefly point out that in our constitution, a specific, I refer to section 16, article 13, and let me just quote, it's quite short. The right of the people and their organizations to effective and reasonable participation at all levels of social, political, and economic decision making shall not be abridged. At uh, kaakibat po nito, we have a uh, existing law, Republic Act 7607. Ito po yung Kwan Magna Carta of Small Farmers. I think this was uh, made into law in 1992, which essentially reiterates that uh, constitutional provision I just uh, quoted from, uh, as well as it amplifies and fleshes out uh, that particular provision as it applies to our small farmers and the agricultural sector. So, nakita ko po dito sa kwan, naging desisyon ng BSP sa paggamit po ng polymer sa paggawa po ng ating uh, 1,000 piso uh, notes. Tila hindi po nasusunod yung proseso po na nakasaad po sa ating saligang batas. Uh, take the case na lang po yung kanina, yung punto po ni Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Uh, paano po nangyari na ang pinili po ng BSP na ilagay po sa design po ng polymer notes ay yung pong uh, ating pong kwan, Philippine Eagle, isa pong endangered species. Kasi po kung pag-usapan po naman natin ng endangered species, Ang puto po ni Senator Padilla ay eh, hindi kayo mas importante yung endangered species yung pong ating mga bayani. So bakit po ma mas binibigyan ng importansya po yung hindi naman po namin sinasabi hindi importante yung Philippine Eagle but perhaps even more important is that we uh, expose our young people and other users of our uh, banknotes to a greater awareness of our heroes, our national heroes. And again Mr. Chairman, speaking of endangered species, Eh, hindi kaya pwede rin i-consider natin ang ating mga abaka farmers as endangered species, perhaps even more important than the Philippine eagle. So kung we, we feel that uh, our abaka farmers also need the protection uh, in the same manner that we want to create greater awareness of and protection for Philippine eagle, siguro naman mas lalong importante po na bigyan po natin ng uh, awareness at sapat na tangkilik po ang ating abaka farmers. So I'll now go very quickly into the related issue of substance, uh, Mr. Chairman. May I also point out uh, that in our constitution, section 12, article uh, 12 also, and I quote, the state shall promote the, the preferential use of Filipino labor, domestic materials, and locally produced goods, and adopt measures that help make them competitive. So I was wondering if the BSP, when it made its decision to shift from a blend of 80% cotton to 20% abaca uh, to uh, polymer, whether they were aware that there is such a provision in the Constitution, which were all, uh, you know, uh, Uh, have we lost the connection? Comsec? Yes, Your Honor. Um, from the side of Mr. Montemayor, nawalan po siya ng internet connection. Mm. Uh, while we're waiting, maybe he, uh, he was mentioning about this uh, constitutional provision. Does the BSP have any comment on that while we're waiting for Mr. Montemayor to reconnect? Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chair, this is Attorney Capone, the General Counsel of the BSP. Yeah, we are aware of 
yeah, permission to continue, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yes, please continue. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chair, we take into account all the existing provisions of law when we made the decision. Uh, it, we... Napakalaki po. So I, I believe that that's a uh, major factor in, in why our peso is depreciating. And, uh, and that's why Sorry, I think... Sir, this, this... We, we lost you for a minute there, so we didn't catch... Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, actually, the Banco Central was just commenting on your statement about the... Uh, uh, maybe they can finish their comment and then you can... Yeah. Just... Sure. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So yeah. my, my yeah. point, Mr. Chairman, is although they pointed out na yun naman pong uh, share ng abaka in terms of the purchases for, you know, banknotes is relatively small, I, I, I see it as, a, as indicative of a mindset, as a general indication of our mindset, uh, which to me is contrary to the President's own pronouncements, so emphasizing agriculture, pushing for our own domestic uh, capacity, to provide as much as possible for our own, own needs, vis-a-vis -vis relying uh, on importation, in this case of uh, plastic uh, raw materials for, the, uh, for our polymer uh, pe peso bill. So it's, it's really a mindset that, that I'm also worried about, Mr. Chairman, na kung ganito palagi, uh, tapos ngayon, pag-uusapan na naman ng nila yung ano po yung low tariff regime they want to continue a low tariff regime on the importation of agricultural products you talk about rice you talk about uh, pork you talk about fish ganun na naman Mr. Chairman eh hindi po talaga tinitingnan yung ano po talaga ang fundamental reasons for the weakness not only of our peso but also of our economy and uh, in the case of the abaca industry we see now what is happening, Mr. Chairman. Although, as I mentioned earlier, parang balit nga naman yung share ng uh, purchases of abaka in the, in the making of banknotes. But if you, you know, if you uh, spread that thinking throughout the entire agriculture and fishery sector, this is what we get. We, we get a burgeoning trade imbalance every month. And I don't see how we can uh, overcome this and, uh, you know, uh, meet the president's own commitments unless we change our mindset. You know, Mr. Chairman, maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Uh, maybe I can ask the BSP to continue with your uh, comment. Uh, eh, tapos na po yung presentation, sir? Uh, Mr. Oh, po, Mr. Chairman. Tapos okay. na po. Thank you. Yeah. Po. Uh, yes, thank you can you. comment on that, uh, some of his uh, uh, regarding issues regarding the constitutionality. Yes, and... Mr. Chair. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Please. Chair. Uh, yeah, the BSP, of course, took into consideration all aspects but number one, uh, we have to be uh, we have to realize that constitutional provisions are not self-executory, meaning these are principles which the constitution li leaves to Congress how to implement. Now, as far as the BSP is concerned, we are cognizant of these provisions. But when we came up with a decision, it's a holistic, meaning we cannot just make a decision based on, let's say, a particular sector or industry. We look at the entire economy, the entire impact, the savings, which is good for all. That's why we have a very extensive presentation and all the features that we took into account before making that final decision, which is still experimental at this stage. So we took into account all the relevant provisions of the Constitution and all the legal premises before we, the decision was arrived at. And we also uh, would like to note that it was approved by no less than the President of the Philippines. And we all know that uh, the President does not just approve any any matter coming from a government agency, there's still complete staff work at the level of the office of the president because at that level, the president can look at the entire economy, all the considerations before giving his final imprimatur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. What, what is the, what is the, I, I don't know if you have any statistics on this, but, uh, or maybe you could give us an idea. What, what, what is the effect on this? What is the demand for abaca for a currency and what is, what is the, in terms of volume, what is the effect of this on our farmers? Well, uh, well, based on the data, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have roughly about 200 farmers that are directly uh, or indirectly engaged in, in, in the abaca industry. And this is spread over, I believe, 56 provinces. I think the top producing uh, province is Catanduanes. So please note also, Mr. Chairman, Catanduanes is probably one of the poorest uh, provinces in the country. So may impact po ito eh, in terms of yung poverty picture. 
uh, availability of jobs, incomes for uh, you know to rural residents, and and also in, in addition to that, Mr. Chairman, it's it's the quite psychological impact. Because yung apo, pati mga farmers para ang feeling nila ngayon, bakit pa hanggang ngayon, bakit ngayon, pati yung ating indusya ng abaka na pinagmamayabang po ng Pilipinas, pati yun po minamalit na natin. We, we we are you know when we were in 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 in, in school I, I hope you also realize uh, experience this Mr. Chairman tinuturo sa atin that we are we should be proud of our abaca industry di ba yung panahon po ng we were, we were under Spain uh, the Philippines was well known for its Manila hemp etc so this is one thing that was very very much uh, pounded into our heads and then ngayon Eh, imbis na tangkilikan po ng ating sariling Banko Sentral na siyang takapagtanggol ng ating currency at ipagbigyan po ng malaking uh, importansya, sila po yung number one po na nagtutulak na itabi po itong ating abaka at ipapabor po natin yung uh, polymer uh, uh, as the basic raw material. So para psychological po Mr. Chairman, parang nawawalan po tuloy ng gana. Hindi lang po yung ating mga magsasaka, but in general, I would say even the many sectors in agriculture, kasi maganda po yung mga policy pronouncements ngayon, uh, especially under President uh, Bongbong. So he has a chance now, I believe, Mr. Chairman, and also the the the, the Senate. Now we are now in in the in new Congress and a new administration to reverse whatever was uh, in our mind uh, not the proper thing to do. Uh, which was done in the previous administration. Yulaman po. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. And at this point, we'd also like to hear from the Abaca pulp manufacturers and how the current BSP initiative will affect their industries. First, we call the representatives from the Association of Abaca Pulp Manufacturers Incorporated. Thank you. Please, uh, uh, if we can keep our presentations brief, thank you very much. Uh, do we have the uh, um, AAPMI? Are they here? Uh, AAPMI and Pop Specialties Philippines Incorporated to give your position. Are they here? Comsec? May we call on Ms. Aurora Peralta, please? She's online, Your Honor. Ma'am. I, I hope you can uh, present to us. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, we have agreed that uh, the presenter for the for our group is uh, Mrs. Uh, Maribel Umpin. So I think... Uh, he suggested that get her name right. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Ongping, Maribel. Ma'am, uh, please feel free to proceed with your presentation. Uh, Ma'am Ma Maribel. Okay, I represent, I represent what Mrs. Peralta has just said, as well as the Habi uh, the Philippine Textile Council, because our mission vision is preservation, development, modernization of our indigenous fabrics. We feel that the fibers and the crafts that this country has and are identified with are nature's gifts. From them, our people have adjusted to the environment by evolving crafts and uses for them. They are part and parcel of our identity and culture to ourselves and to the world. It is therefore with utmost dismay that the BSP out of nowhere but itself decided to move to polymer currency and in the process dropping abaca, which was an important part of our currency and the currency of many other countries. Abaca is our premier fiber, known the world over as sourced from the Philippines since the 19th century, when it became world renowned, used and appreciated. Our abaca industry is the livelihood of thousands of farmers, 
weavers, retailers, disrespecting it, which is what the BSP has done without consultation or advice or minimal research that we know or was known to us as to its status in the Philippine universe, which also extends to the whole world, is unpatriotic. Worse, when asked for information or explanation, the BSP ignored such requests. In, then, in the end, they came up with inane answers, like polymer currency is cheaper. Some countries already use it or use longer wallets so it won't fold because it creases badly. Even worse, there's a subcommittee on fibers under the Department of Agriculture that is engaged in promoting and upgrading the abaca industry here who was not consulted. When it requested a hearing to express its opposition to the exclusion of abaca in the polymer currency, it was ignored until the polymer currency was officially out for public use. Then, and only then, did the BSP grant the, the subcommittee on fibers a hearing, which at the very least was in effect useless and worse, hypocritical uh, that as the decision had been made. In this case, BSP has arrogated to itself an independent status from the citizenry, from part of the government that is mandated to be consulted, as well as from the ethical behavior as a government agency in service to the public. BSP refuses to say who decided this exclusion of Abaca move. If there was a committee that was in charge, how did it come to this decision? They seem to be above the public and its interests, catering only to their own interests. In this unilateral move, they have made the grievous mistake of substituting the three World War II heroes who fought for the freedom of the Philippines for a bird, albeit the Philippine eagle. A currency depicts the character of a country, its history, and its symbols. While the Philippine eagle is a natural wonder, it cannot equal or overtake the heroism of three heroes that as human beings forsook life for their country's freedom. They belong to our history of which we are proud because they depict the higher nature of human accomplishment and self-sacrifice which cannot compare to a bird. All of the above comes from the arrogance of power, the error of excluding the raison the etre of public service from decisions and the distance that BSP has put itself from the taxpayers that fund it. Thank you. Wow. Yes, um, thank you very much for your uh, uh, presentation and, uh, and we, we appreciate your concerns. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ma yes. ah, this is Dr. Dr. Aurora Peralta. Can yes. I add to what has been uh, uh, given by Mrs. Ompin? Yes, of course. Please proceed, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I'm going also to read it. The Department of Agriculture and the Welfare of the Farmers are the above mission of the leadership of President Ferdinand Marcos. He, his Excellency highlighted his concern in his State of the Nation address given last July 25, 2022, his decision to take the leadership of the Department of Agriculture is a manifestation of his commitment to raise the importance of, our, of agriculture in our economy. Abaca is among, if not, if not, most important agricultural crops in our country. It's not only a means of livelihood to our impoverished farmers. Abaca is a pride to Filipinos, it being endemic to the Philippines and with the international reputation of being one of the best fibers in the world. From its use in naval warfare, when the United States considered Abaca as a critical material, 
such that she kept a stockpile of this commodity, it's now a material of modern technology. Among others, abaca is now used as condenser paper, electrolytic insulator, high-tech capacitor, and specialty papers, which include banknotes. Our Bancourt Central ng Pilipinas took cognizance of the technical value of abaca when in May 2000, it decided to use this fiber in our banknotes. Although a bit late in considering Japan has been up using abaca for its banknote since 1968. So it's continuously used abaca for its banknote. It is unfortunate that early this year, DSP has decided to drop abaca in our 1,000 peso in favor of polymer, which is plastics. This has devastating effect on our farmers who have started to see abaca as a reliable source of income considering its growing technical usage. A reduction in the market for abaca is a reduction in the income of our farmers. Also, there will be worker in, workers in the, in the industry that might be displaced due to the decision of DSP to abandon abaca in favor of plastics. We understand that one of the objectives of this government is to create more jobs for the Filipinos and not to lose them to workers of, foreign, of a foreign country. May we inform your honors that polymer of, or plastic has no established supremacy over abaca in the use of banknotes. Our group has done research on this aspect. A cap, okay, uh, uh, we plead to your honors, not only for the sake of our farmers and workers in the abaca industry, but to your sense of values. Abaca being our heritage to keep this fiber in our banknotes. Uh, the, it is the position of, the, of our group, the abaca industry, which consists of the abaca farmers, fiber extractors, strippers, traders, and pulp manufacturers for the Baco Central ng Pilipinas to continue using abaca in our banknotes. Please consider the following. Issues raised, this is, these are the issues raised during the privileged speech of Senator Pimentel. BSP requirement for banknotes, annually, abaca exports 1,000 to 1,800 metric tons of abaca for banknotes production of BSP. The export value is about $10.8 million. We have been supplying abaca pulp for uh, Philippine banknotes since 2000 years. In comparison, Japan started using abaca pulp since 1968. At present, Japan uses 2,000 metric tons of abaca pulp for the banknote printing of the printing bureau of Japan. That is the annual requirements. Okay, lack of fiber supply. In spite of the Pilipina reporting a shortage of abaca supply, the Philippines never failed to deliver abaca pulp for BSP requirements on a timely basis. Sustainability, the question of sustainability. According to Pilpida, it has launched a massive cultivation of abaca production all over the Philippines in response to the deficit of abaca fiber supply. Because Philippine abaca is endemic to the Philippines, the plants, the plants will survive with minimal minimal maintenance and supervision. It is a fact that abaca has been here even before Magellan, as noted by Pegapeta, the chronicler of uh, Magellan, who put the Philippines in the world map. And due to the increasing price of abaca farmer, the farmers are now finding it more profitable to propagate abaca in farms. As to water consumption and conservation, we are talking of sustainability here. An abaca park, an abaca park consumes around 400 cubic meters of water per metric ton of abaca park. The waste water is then treated and recycled. All of the water that the mall consumes goes back into the natural cycle of water. 
contrary to the claims that abaca water usage requires high amount of water to grow, abaca will survive neither in waterlogged areas nor soil with hard pump with hard pump. Optimum soil moisture is between 60 to 80 percent saturation. On the question of the claim advantages of uh, polymer banknotes, it's difficult to counter it. This is the result of our research. The, the basically oriented polypropylene considered as a one-time use plastic is commonly available. Therefore, the substrate can easily be obtained and used to print counterfeit money. On the other hand, the possibility to replicate banknotes paper is not commonly available as the production requires the inclusion of water marks. Security fibers, abaca fibers, with, which are still, with, which are all embedded in the production and it's not possible to be produced by any other ordinary paper producer. Euronews reported that in 2020, Romania, was victim to the largest purging of plastic banknotes in the world. It was further reported that it is relatively short period of time to counterfeit blank, to produce counterfeited plastic banknotes. The proud was worth about 350,000 euro. So our, we, we, we have here stated our source, then according to uh, I, I do not know how to pronounce it. It's a German. A source from Poga White Paper, security element, security just by a window picture. The best security solution for banknote is a combination of embedded, printed, and applied pictures. A possibility only cotton-based notes can offer. The main security paper of polymer notes, the see-through window, on the other hand, can be produced simply even with the use of household and office printing devices. More on the question of more environment friendly, it is being claimed that due to the longer lifespan and durability of the polymer banknote, plastic currency is more environment friendly than paper currency. Such claim is being challenged by a new research from Moneyboat. It said plastic um, banknotes are almost three times worse for the environment than their paper equivalents. The study shows that the volume of new plastic banknotes used by an adult a year uh, would, in the average, release 8.77 kilograms of carbon dioxide compared to 2.92 kilograms generated by older cotton-based paper notes of the same volume. Also, the emission created in manufacturing euro polymer notes are 4.97 kilograms compared to 1.8 kilograms for paper. Again, as reported by the German, uh, just, uh, uh, sorry, I, I cannot pronounce. The, what is better than plastics Cotton-based banknotes are particularly environmentally friendly in their origins as they are made from a byproduct of the textile industry. The same applies for renewable raw materials like abaca or hemp, which can have additional advantages like local production and are already being used today for sustainable banknote production, whereas plastic is a synthetic material that is derived from petroleum, a very hazardous product, and as the BSP acknowledged, is non-biodegradable. Also, to recycle old polymer banknotes, they are first shredded into small confetti-like pieces and then pelletized. These pellets are the second largest direct source of microplastic pollution in the ocean by weight. This is considering that less than 10% of plastic has ever been recycled. Pelleticizing the shredded polymer requires additional consumption of energy and emission of carbon. Once in the ocean, microplastic can either float or sink. Microplastics lighter than seawater, such as polypropylene, will float and disperse widely across the ocean.
they bent, they eventually accumulate in in uh, gears resulting from current oceanic current. It, it was estimated that 93 to 268 kilotons of these microplastics are currently floating in the oceans. Either microplastics such as acrylic, acrylic are denser than seawater and most probably accumulate on the, on the ocean floor, which means that a significant amount of microplastics might eventually accumulate in the deep sea. Now, on the question, less likely to transmit viruses and diseases. This is not true. Paper banknotes a lower health risk to the public than polymer notes. A study conducted by Brigham Young University in Utah shows that SARS-CoV-2 virus almost immediately perished when deposited in a paper banknote, but stayed on plastic surfaces for eight for up to 48 hours. Okay. Other studies also indicate that paper banknotes do not transmit other pathogens while in plastic banknotes may. It was observed that soap surfaces like cotton banknotes are very inefficient in transferring any pathogens that they harbor to, to the handler. That is, despite prolonged survival, survival of E. coli on the paper urine notes, there was no transmission observed on the volunteers. In another study commissioned by the Bank of England and reported by ML Loom of Humani.com, it was shown that surfaces of cast may contain bacteria or virus, but does not necessarily mean that someone touching the surface is picking up an, an infection. It found that even if exposed to a high dosage equivalent to being directly sneezed on, the virus did not survive at high levels on notes, either of the modern polymer or at the old passion paper variety for very long. The study shows that the level of virus found on a banknote remained stable for one hour after exposure. Over the next five hours, the amount of the virus present declined. Now, on cost advantage, okay. Uh, it was reported that the cost of the ship from cotton-based banknote to polymer bills involved not only the materials and their printing, but also the conversion of ATMs and cost counting machine, as well as the environmental impact in the production of equipment and parts and disposals of similar machines which have lost their use. Advantages of using ABACA in our banknotes. First, 250 million earnings of farmers, strippers, and traders will be lost in the ship of BSP to plastic. Here, we counted not only the value of the fiber, but also uh, because there are also other workers employed, not just the farmers. There are employees, workers, um, strippers, traders, and the workers in the Abaca part mill. As new market is found, farmers and workers' income are expected to increase. But the ship of BSP to plastic will cause a decrease in their income. It gives pride to the farmers that their money, the Philippine banknote, is made of Abaca they are producing. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, the last one is the support for Filipino her her heritage. Sabi nga po ni, ni uh, Robin Hood Padilla, Senator, uh, binayo natin yung, yung ibon, pero we abandoned abaca, which is a far more, it's, which is also our heritage. Let me read this. This is the last one. Abaca has been with us even before Magellan discovered the Philippines. It's endemic to the Philippines. The country has established itself worldwide as the producer of the strongest, most porous, most durable fiber, which is abaca. And it's, it is internationally called Manila hemp in the international market. We are promoting the strongest natural fiber in the world that is unique and homegrown in the Philippines. That's a good economic. Sorry, there's another. The, the last one. 
the abaca pulp manufacturers are contributing to the economy with its dollar income, apart from providing jobs for the factory workers, supply chains, and taxes for the Philippines. For last year, 2021, the abaca pulp manufacturers contributed $152.4 million production of polymer will not generate taxes for the Philippines and will not be earning that kind of income. Salamat po. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you Mr. very Chairman. much. Uh, yeah, Senator yes, Chairman. Senator Pia. Yes, Senator. Yes, uh, would you like to yeah. ask a question? Yes, Senator. I, I apologize. I don't have my video on right now because I'm mobile. No, I'm afraid the signal might not be clear. But can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. Yes. Uh, just a short manifestation. Um, as I mentioned when I when I uh, asked questions earlier, I will be listening intently to all the presentations. And now that I have heard, and I'm not sure if you have a few more speakers uh, who are supporting the retention of the banknotes to uh, retention of the use of Abaca for the banknotes, may I just already um, place my request that um, uh, BSP responds in writing to all those concerns because there were a lot of concerns that were raised that basically support the questions that I asked. No, um, I won't go into it, pero marami akong narinig in the last few people who presented. Uh, so I'd, I'd really like, an, I mean, obviously they can respond uh, now in the hearing, but I'd like the point by point express because when I dis dissected the issue on sustainability, ito narinig ko yung ibang side na there may not be um, complete truth to to the conclusion no, by DSP that um, it is in fact sustainable. And then when we speak of uh, the health aspect, tama nga naman po yung pinoint out, diba? there are studies nga that show that um, it is inconclusive or it is actually conclusive that you can't really get COVID from touching surface. Of course, you should be mindful and always... Uh, use sanitary practices, but by simply touching something, hindi ka magkaka-COVID that way. So, if that is a main reason for the shift because it's safer, then we have to really study this. And let me end by saying that I recognize the authority of BSP. No? Wala naman akong question doon. Uh, they are a very professional organization. They went through the process. Pero tayo naman po as uh, senators, we also have our... Um, our oversight power in aid of legislation, and that's why we're having these inquiries. So yun lang naman, I just like a really thorough um, response to that. And I'm hoping that I can hear from BSP that they're willing to really look at these issues um, please again before we make that that uh, final decision, uh, Mr. Chairman. That's all. Yes, thank you, uh, Senator. I agree, and I think it, this was this this uh, media this uh, hearing has been a good venue to voice out. The concerns of each side, and at least nakarating din sa BSP yung mga concerns ng ating mga abaka producers. So I'm, I'm instructing the Comsec now to uh, summarize all these concerns, and uh, I'd like to request from the BSP if they can point by point address the concerns of our uh, abaka producers. Uh, would that would, would is the BSP okay with that? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we will be happy to uh, address all the points and comments uh, raised. Uh, in, in a paper that we will be submitting to the committee, uh, Your Honor. Uh, nonetheless, uh, just just a um, some few quick um, uh, responses. Um, Let's while make it brief, we, uh, uh, Mr. Sir, because we have other hearings as well, so if we can make it brief, thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, while we do not uh, uh, downplay the, the number of uh, farmers and others, um, uh, workers involved in the ex in the processing and export of abaca uh, to the to, uh, to for for Philippine banknote uh, requirements. We would just like to uh, again highlight, uh, Your Honor, that um, the the um, the fact is that the global demand for for abaca exceeds uh, global supply, Your Honor. So. Um, uh, that means that the job displacements and the displacements of other workers may actually be diverted to others, and perhaps even um, more uh, value-added add, uh, products, Mr. Chair, like uh, uh, 
uh, there are developments on the use of abaca for reinforced plastic uh, components and also um, for other uh, building components that, that make these uh, uh, parts uh, stronger and, uh, and better, uh, Your Honor. And uh, on, on, uh, on the uh, opinion that uh, the, the issuance of polymer banknotes came out of nowhere, um, Mr. Mr. Chair, I think we went through the process and the thought, the thinking uh, that and the studies that went uh, um, into that uh, recommendation to, 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 to subject the polymer banknotes into a circulation uh, test. And on the ex, uh, banks uh, changing their ATMs, uh, we have been, since the beginning, we have been in touch with the banks. And um, uh, they, they, um, we, we, in our discussions with them, it, it became uh, obvious that the, these machines could only require a recalibration. In fact, Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, more than 2,000 of these uh, ATMs uh, have already are already dispensing polymer banknotes as we speak, and uh, the banks committed that uh, by the end of the year all the ATMs would be uh, recalibrated in order to process um, um, the the polymer banknotes. Uh, all in all, Mr. Chair, uh, on security, hygiene, and sustainability, uh, I believe we have uh, presented. Uh, the, our basis, uh, and these are based on uh, uh, internationally uh, published reports and peer-reviewed reports uh, from reputable uh, institutions, uh, Mr. Chair, and of, of course other uh, uh, globally renowned central banks. Um, and uh, um, so, we, the, our our um, initiative uh, to 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 try out uh, these uh, polymer bank notes, which uh, we are in, in, in the, um, we are constantly on the lookout for opportunities uh, to improve the security um, and, and uh, sustainability and hygiene of our, of our uh, bank notes. Um, so we, we stand uh, on those, uh, by those uh, reports, Your Honor. And uh, of course, um, that's why we are putting it into a circulation test so that we can uh, determine, get the facts and the evidence uh, based on the uh, use of the polymer banknotes under local Philippine conditions. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, can, can I answer just uh, one issue raised by the BSP, Pedipo? Yes, uh, let's, can we just keep it brief and at the same time, yes. uh, we'll okay. ask, after this, ma'am, we'll ask the BSP okay. to submit a written. Uh, yes, yes, to... just, just one point. Yes. We, yes. I mean, we, the abaca industry is working closely with the Pilpida. It's just unfortunate that the executive director of Pilpida is attending another another session. Uh, that is the, the the I understand there is a budget hearing. Then it to Pilpida has launched a massive plan, uh, production of abaca fiber, and we expect that pretty soon we will be able to answer the deficit presently. But then it to as I said in my in, in what I have read, we never failed to uh, meet the requirements of BSP, and it is always on time and on uh, 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 on the right volume. Hindi po kami nagkulang, pero gusto rin ako rin pong idagdag na ang abaka po ay atin. Whatever we earn, it is ours. Ang plastic, hindi po atin yan. Yan po, eh, import po yan. Gagastos tayo ng dollars. Ang dollars na gagastos din natin sa, sa uh, abaka, babal, ay bumabalik po sa atin. Yung pong sa plastic, sa polymers, yan po ay puro labas. By understanding, my understandings, I think you have explained earlier that we do not have that much money. So why use so much money for that? Why spend money for for, for uh, uh, importing plastics and give the jobs to these foreign country workers in foreign countries? Yun lang po. Salamat po, uh, Senator Villar.
Thank you very much. And again, I'm happy that uh, this is, this uh, hearing was used as a venue to express the concerns of our Abaco farmers. I hope that I hope that all stakeholders can work together to make for the welfare also of our Abaco farmers. At the same time, the overall well-being. I think uh, we're all here. We should all uh, endeavor to help each other in this. Uh, make sure that with these changes, uh, we can come up with a solution that hopefully will be uh, uh, acceptable to all sides. But uh, Again, let me conclude by expressing my sincere gratitude to our resource persons who participated in our inquiry today and who kindly responded to the committee's questions and shared their valuable insights. Uh, we appreciate and take note of your respective comments and positions on the resolution. Uh, we hope that this investigation will help the government come up with concrete solutions to address the issues that were brought forth uh, today. Uh, I am hoping that the discussions today will help me and my fellow legislators to develop a legislative proposal to deal with the issue. And if you have further materials or comments that you would like to submit, kindly send them to the committee secretariat. And again, to reiterate the request of Senator Cayetano, I'd also like to, uh, I'd also like to direct the committee secretariat to uh, consolidate the questions and send them to BSP. And I'd like to request the BSP if they can respond uh, uh, quickly to their concerns so that uh, these can be addressed uh, this can be the committee can be informed of these uh, responses. So, uh, with the approval of my colleagues and in consideration of the time allotted for this hearing, uh, I would like to suspend the inquiry in native legislation of BS resolution number three and the and the privileged speech of Senator Coco Pimentel on the same subject matter. Uh, with that, uh, I thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Paul Salahat. Thank you, Sabi and our resource person.